welcome uh, to the oil persons webinar series spectrum of conservation uh, many of you have already uh, attended our uh, talks before so some of you might know that oil persons uh, is dedicated to nature education we have been conducting nature camps and nature trails for past more than 5 years now uh, through this spectrum of conservation we are trying to uh, Uh, reach to the common uh, common people, and we are trying to invite all the researchers, uh, many of the researchers as well as professionals, to share their knowledge of conservation so that the message reaches to the maximum audience. Uh, about uh, today's uh, talk, uh, it is going to be on marine and aquatic research challenges, adventures, and faunal diversity. It will be led by uh, Mr. Amit Patil. He is currently pursuing his PhD from uh, environmental science from the School of Environmental Science and Engineering, Ch Changlang University, Xi'an, China. Uh, he has uh, more than seven years of experience in studying ecology. Uh, this includes uh, marine and estuarine studies of zooplanktons, coastal and bird ecology, deep sea benthic. Neofauna, and presently he is studying river ecology, and I think this is the topic of his PhD as well. When he was in India, he has worked with uh, CSIR NIO, that is National Institute of Oceanography, as project assistant, and with Salim Ali Center for Ornithology and Natural History uh, as GRF, that is SACON. Yeah. So uh, that was about today's uh, uh, guest. So it is over to you, uh, Amit. Today, today's topic is about marine ecosystem, and we are going to see the different types of ecosystems and the faunal diversity in it. But before I start this uh, lecture, I would like to say thanks to the Oikoisans to give me opportunity to present uh, and share my thoughts and experience regarding my field. And uh, let's start with our topic. So today uh, we will see these different marine ecosystem. Sorry, maybe my. Okay, yeah. So today, uh, just to maintain our time limit and uh, the, uh, everything goes smoothly, uh, what I have done here, there is a basic guideline. like what we will do we'll look from the we'll start from the small ecosystem and end up with the big ecosystem it's very tough and it's very difficult to you know cover all the aquatic ecosystem in one or even a small time span so what i have done here i have just taken few of them and uh, in that i have selected some of the animals which i have come across personally and uh, in that Uh, i have even taken some of the examples like some accident some adventure or some uh, what we called uh, fun facts i have come across with them so we will look into those things and uh, we'll continue our journey so before we start with all the things i would like to tell you about these aquatic ecosystems because as i have told you there are lot of subdivision and division into it but basically or majorly there are only two division those are like fresh and the marine and fresh everybody knows but what does exactly mean by marine marine is nothing but uh, which have a dissolved solids especially the salts and which makes distinguished or different from the freshwater ecosystem and uh, these freshwater ecosystem subdivided into another different different kinds of like river streams lakes ponds uh, whereas marine you can see estuary you will see uh, marshland you will see uh, seas ocean so for giving you some idea about these i have here draw um, illustration actually i am very bad at illustrating something but just to represent what exactly these uh, systems are and how they are connected with each other uh, so what i have done here you can see from the mountain the rivers are moving and going and meeting to the ocean 
But before they meet to the ocean, you can see there is a different small patch in between them. So I have given that name as Ishuri. So what does Ishuri exactly means? These Ishuri is nothing but uh, the intrusion of when the intrusion of seawater or the salt water comes into the river and it happens because of the some tidal action of the uh, of the ocean you know and when it comes into the river it forms another different kind of ecosystem which is not through ocean and uh, it makes very unique type of system we call them as a ishuri you can see some green circles over here so these are nothing but actually uh, the systems which are like a small aquatic system uh, they have water inside it but uh, you can see the lake and the wetland over here i have given these name different different so does that make uh, difference just because they have a different name or does these systems are different actually lakes are like slow moving water whereas wetlands are have a water but not that much as compared to the lake but they have a more of a called as a soil uh, saturated soil especially and uh, it contains more of a plants in it so it is like somewhat kind of a marshy swampy area uh, whereas in lakes it is totally different then when you see there are two rectangles i have showed here uh, these are like uh, these these shapes you can see these are what actually these are the coastal area when these ishuri or the river meets to the ocean they have one connecting area in between them so they these areas are actually again uh, come into contact with two different kind of uh, systems for example lake ishuri from the upward and from downward the ocean or the sea so these are again makes a unique system to study or to see these animal diversity in it so when we see when we heard when we listen this word we picture something like this river so what we imagine always we imagine something like green mountain and from that some nice green color of water is moving but before when river starts it's with very small shallow water and uh, you occasionally see some mountains or sometimes you see something like this pebble area or some rocks in it and these are also very unique ecosystem as uh, you can see in this uh, they have a lot of rocks and i came during my phd first time with uh, like experienced this system and i that time came to know oh, these systems are very, very unique and dynamic in nature too. And they have a lot of animals. And basically I am a biologist. So I, when I need to study these animals, I need to go personally into the water. I need to enter inside that system. I need to study these animals. So uh, for small system, it's very easy. You know, when these streams are, uh, we want to study some animals, we want to do some kind of research in it, it's very easy to study. But when it is a big ecosystem, it's very, very tough uh, because uh, for that you need a different kind of gear, you need a different kind of uh, what we call gadgets. So here what we have done. So in the first picture, you can see here, I have uh, gone with my lab mates and uh, we tried to uh, study some of the uh, water parameter and for that we we have used some gear uh, called as a probe then in second uh, picture you can see uh, for collecting animals i have used net then in third picture you can see uh, i have used some different kind of gear to collect sediment sample so like that way we need to you know uh, when you want to study this ecosystem you can't just study them uh, from you know out of the system you need to go personally visit uh, them in person uh and uh, yeah, my study is come with animals so these are like just a representative of like how this fauna looks like so these are some of the macro invertebrate from the river sample and basically in river you will find most of the insect babies or insect larvae i was lucky enough and we have even uh, uh during my this phd 
uh, we have tried to you know highlight some of the problem related with this uh, system environment especially in my area where i am right now and we tried to highlight uh, by using some uh, uh, uh what we call the environment reverse especially like how much it is loaded uh because of the pollution because of some other kind of activity so we were lucky enough to uh publish into the nature and uh, reach to the people common people come to our next ecosystem that is wetland and lake as i have told there are a lot of ecosystems and it's very tough to complete all the ecosystems in one uh, lecture so what i have for example i have just taken a lake because uh, i i find it is very unique and uh, when i was in sakon during my uh, jrf time uh, it was a very nice experience i had with that lake so i would like to show you like how these slow moving water system uh are also very important or equally important as these river so this is a example i have taken from the maharashtra uh from the village called as a vengurla and there i had this uh, uh experience of uh, sighting lot of birds in this small wetland a uh, small lake sorry a uh, small lake and it was so unique you know when i was uh every time uh, going and visiting this uh, coastal bird survey that time i used to be like always uh, that why this small lake is very very attractive uh, and uh, why it is taking lot of attention of these birds so you can see uh that these uh, wetlands were having lot of different different kind of uh, again small subset of habitats such as they have some grassland they have some uh, what we called shrubs they have some uh, different kind of fields over there so it it was making them unique you know to approach not only just for you know uh, eating and coming for fishing but sometimes they use so i'll just start back from here yeah you can okay. start from here yes so yeah i was uh, talking about the lakes actually um this was one of the lake which i came across when i was uh, doing my jrf uh, at sakon and uh, this situated in maharashtra uh, taluka named as vengola and it's very small lake however uh, it was very unique to see all these different kinds of birds you know to come and feed sometimes even they just used to just come occasionally in that area so it took our attention and we used to always whenever we used to go for our regular bird survey we used to always take a halt for a while over here and we used to you know have a look around like what exactly uh, like how this uh, lake is attracting these birds so it was very nice to see these different different kinds of birds and you know birds are very interesting because they have a colors they have a lot of uh, what we called a uh, different kind of a uh, beak shape so it all and it's a big animal so it's very easy you know to see them in nature so most of the people are get automatically fascinated by them and uh, yeah i was telling about the same thing that even we were fortunate to see some other mammals such as these otters they are very shy it's very tough or difficult to see them in nature or in open area such as this lake we have find and it was very enjoyable you know when they were fishing in that lake uh, and enjoying themselves so it was very nice experience so uh, as i was telling it was a small lake it was a small ecosystem still we used to see these lot of birds in this uh, graphical representation what i have tried to do is i just try to show you uh, that water dependent as well as water independent birds were also there and uh, you can see there were some grassland birds there were some uh, frugivorous birds like the birds which are dependent on some fruits and all so that doesn't mean that if it is aquatic ecosystem if it is water that is not that only water birds are going to get gather over there so it was a very nice experience uh to see and uh, it it got published in uh, one of the conferences uh, during 2015 so if you want to know more about it you can definitely go and uh, look into that paper 
Then, uh, as I was uh, talking about uh, that, uh, when river comes and joins to the ocean, before that, it forms another kind of uh, dynamic ecosystem. We call them as a ishuri. And this is because I was telling, it is not maintaining the salinity or some properties throughout the, throughout the system. It's like ishuri itself have uh, up, mid and down uh, divisions. It means when it is near to the river, the salinity or the salts in it, it's very, very less. But as you go toward the ocean side of the ishuri, the salinity or the salts in it and some other dissolved solids are very high. And uh, even it have a bank like a river, like two sides uh, with the land. So it also have a different kind of plant as you will see toward the river, the plants are somewhat like a terrestrial, like regular terrestrial plants you can see. But as you will go near to the ocean, you will find because as the salinity changes, there are different kinds of plants uh, are growing around it. We call them as a mangrove. So it is again a different kind of ecosystem, a part of fishery, but still it's a mangrove ecosystem we called as. It's a different, totally different. But uh, we will not see all this different, different, uh, again, subdivided ecosystem. We'll just focus on this fishery. And when I was in um, my uh, time period during NIO, uh, I, I was involved in these uh, planktonic sample, especially the zooplankton. So what are these zooplankton? These are nothing but the animal plankton. It's like some small tiny creature, which you can't see by your naked eye, but uh, you need some microscope to visualize them. So what we used to do, um, we used to take some net, as you can see in this picture, we have used one net to capture them. And we used to take them from the surface of the water. As I have told, it's a plankton. Plankton means what? It's a tiny creature which float or you know drift in the water. And it have its own movement, but you can't visualize them by naked eye, or I should say from long distance, you can't visualize them. It's very, very tough to see their movement or migration. But uh, they play a very important major role in aquatic food web, especially in pelagic food web. And uh, for your kind information, these are not only present in uh, Ishuri, these are present in river, these are present in lake, these are present in every kind of aquatic ecosystem. But just we have moved from those small to the bigger system, the type of gear, or I should say the methodology to collect them because I need to study them, I need to see them. So I have used different kind of method to collect them. That's all. So they look something like this. You can see in these, uh, don't worry about these technical names, but you can see they, they are a mixture of different, different kinds of animals, sometimes the larvae of the animals. Uh, so in these also, they have a two categories. It's like a true plankton or one is false plankton. What does that mean? True plankton means they are, throughout their lifespan, they uh, behave or they are a plankton in nature. But when false plankton, it means a part of their lifespan, they spend as a planktonic. For example, when they are in the, their early stages, such as egg, such as larvae, such as first insta, second insta, so they behave as a planktonic. But when they become a bigger, they sometimes settle down, they change uh, their form, so they come into different category of the animals, not in the zooplankton. And when we were dealing with like I, as i was explaining about this all systems it meets to the ocean but before it meets there is a portion i called in between like land and the water so these are nothing but uh, a coastal area and in that also you have a lot of different n number of ecosystem or systems but again i have just used this one from them that is intertidal system what does that mean and why it is uh, uh, very important? As I was telling you, each and every system is very unique. Uh, and you see uh, each and every ecosystem are changing with their uh, way, uh, changing with their uh, organism, the different types of creature. You can see as the system changes, the types of creature are also changing. 
and over here in intertidal you have a, again different type of substratum or i should say the floor of the surface of, of the of the system it's like somewhere you will find rocks somewhere you will find sand somewhere you will find mud so according to that again the fauna changes for sure and uh, as you can see when you are moving from uh, the river to the sea water the types uh, the color of the animal is also getting more and more beautiful you know the bright color you can see the uh, the shapes and the color are very very beautiful so it's again uniqueness about uh, all this uh, ecosystem and uh, uh, then when i was telling about this surface of the floor like you can see somewhere it is totally in sandy nature somewhere it is like sandy mixing with some another kind of animals like sometimes oyster and forming another totally another kind of bed and uh, becoming another ecosystem so it's very very you know unique uh, area to study uh, for these uh, animals so sometimes you find some interesting fauna uh, not only just uh, what we called the benthic fauna or some planktonic but you you will be able to see some birds also so in west coast of india you will always be able to see these white bellied sea eagle you know it's very very unique so who is this white bellied sea eagle he is a raptor it's a raptor uh, this bird is very huge very big and it always prefer to make their houses or the nest around these coastal areas and uh, during my second jrf uh, time i came across a lot of time uh, this bird you know and this bird uh, always try to make their houses on this conifer tree so it's very interesting it's not like when you are doing only one particular type of research that means you are only and only studying this no you come across sometimes side by side to the other kind of fauna other kind of animals so it's very very unique very dynamic yeah i have even come across uh, to the plants also but as i have told uh, i'm not that much good at it but maybe uh, in our meeting maybe there will be some uh, a uh, botanist or plant expert maybe they if somebody is interested to know about these uh, plant name or what exactly these plants are maybe they will be able to tell you so it's very unique to see them and definitely you don't have to worry about the names and all sometimes you can just go and enjoy this beauty uh, of these uh, system is giving to you you know so here what we are trying to do uh, with the second team Uh, even our uh, former director uh, P. A. Aziz was there, and on his visit, we were uh, roaming through all these different different area and habitat, and it was a wonderful experience, you know, uh, to lively visualize these coastal birds, and it was in gregarious number, like not only one or two. When you see them, it will be like you will see a flock of these birds are feeding at a time on these different different habitat. and they they are very very you know wonderful to see them when they are feeding just for one small crab or some uh, one small fish also they are fighting so it was a wonderful experience to visualize them in live when not only uh, just um, this coastal and beach but uh, yeah i was lucky enough to get my scuba diving license and uh, when i was in anayo goa i got involved into some of the coral projects also and uh, the, that experience was really really unique in a way that uh, first time i can see the forest inside the water also as we have known about wildlife wildlife means we always pictureize a lion or tiger in a jungle but when we 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 see this uh, world of water or aquatic system you you can't imagine that underwater there is another kind of forest and it's very very beautiful and unique so when i was uh, associated with that project as i have told as system changes as your objective or the goal for the particular research changes you were methodology changes so for that we have to use a different kind of way to study them 
and that time we used to uh, you know uh, have our gears we used to have a team and uh, then we used to plan and then we used to go into those system and you, you have a time limit but uh, when when you plan properly so everything goes uh, very fine but uh, yeah in these photographs you can see these are very beautiful creatures over here uh, but frankly speaking uh, to all of you uh, it's very tough in wild or in nature to find these all the creatures because first of all when you dive everything looks big magnify and the if water is not good like if the water clarity or transparency is not good you can't see these animals it's very tough and in these photographs these animals looks very big but actually they are very small in uh, reality and uh, it's very tough to uh, identify but as we have uh, got experience we started uh, like n number of dives then we started realizing that there are other other animals other than the corals like the big uh, giant animals there are some small animals also which you can definitely uh, you know uh, document them or try to study them so that was again a, another kind of experience with the coral ecosystem or i should say uh, in near the coastal area ecosystem this is a experience i got during my, my nio rc mumbai trip uh, so when from coastal you go further it is the system is getting more bigger and bigger and uh, it's very tough or difficult to approach them in person or by just using one or two uh, gear you can't do it so for that big system you need a big uh, vehicle so scientists develop big vehicle we call them as a research vessel so this is rv sindhu sadhana nio have or i should say our uh, india have this is a wonderful ship what we india right now have this ship have not only carry you but all your uh, instrument inside that so it's very easy to carry out whatever type of goal you have to study these animals or the ecosystem or even do some kind of research related with the uh, ocean so it's very very unique experience i had during that time and uh, i would like to just show you some small or i should say some few instrument just to get an idea like how does exactly works they have a lot but uh, and it it may even look uh, more bit complicated to you but uh, it's the application of this instrument is very easy you can see they have some uh, gray color uh, columns these are actually nothing but the bottles they are a sampler what it do it actually do what you know it goes into the water and it collects water sample for us so why does it have a lot of bottle like why we need a lot of number as i have said it's a big ecosystem and uh, a small ecosystem a 1 liter of bottle also uh, of sample will do to study nicely but when the bigger ecosystem is there you can't just take a small amount of water or small amount of a sample from the area and you can't just uh, interpret something so we need sometimes a large amount of water or large amount of sample to conclude something uh, and it depends even what kind of objective or what kind of goals you have so what it uh, have else than that it have even sensor to the bottom of it and uh, what it do it tells you about different kind of things such as it will tell you the depth at what depth you are reaching so we will get an idea like how exactly the deep ecosystem is even according to that you can divide the number of sample you want at particular depth as i have showed you in earlier slides they have a 24 sets of bottles so you can divide those bottles according to the need of your research or to achieve your goal and you can uh, get sample from respective depth but as a biologist or ecologist for me my task was to collect the zooplankton so what i used to do over here you can see in earlier slide i have showed you a net this net looks like similar the way uh, 
was in earlier, but it is a little bit bigger in size. It have a multiple buckets, as you can see in the right hand side, and uh, it have a big mouth opening. And even this net, it goes vertically, actually. It doesn't take sample from the sub surface layer. It actually take the sample from the column of the water, because as I have told you, there is one extra uh, factor we have got in this ecosystem because the ecosystem is very big. So we have got a depth factor. So what we have done here, rather than taking sample from the surface, we are taking sample in particular depth because animals will distribute accordingly. So this net goes somewhat like this into the uh, water. And uh, when it reached to the particular height, from bottom to upward direction will start uh, taking the sample in it. This is a representation of uh, some of the benthic fauna when I was studying deep sea benthos, means a deep sea animals which are residing in the uh, bottom of the seafloor. And these animals I have studied from 6,000 meter depth. It is from Central Indian Ocean Basin. Uh, I was uh, very lucky enough to be associated with that project. And uh, when I was studying these uh, uh, samples, I was so surprised to see even the life exist uh, after 6,000 meter also. So it was very, very interesting to see something like this, you know? So let's... Uh, see some unique accidents uh, happen during uh, my field studies. So here I would like to share you with you, with you all about one story about seahorse and uh, what happened actually uh, when I was doing a raptor survey in Maharashtra uh, when I was associ associated with SACON. Uh, that time uh, we were doing survey as you can see uh, in this um, map this was the beach and we were doing survey along with that and uh, it was a time of uh, cyclone actually and uh, even the people from my area they were telling me not to go outside for study and actually it is weird uh, for any birder if uh, any birder have an idea that during cyclonic condition or bad, bad weather condition you never go and visit any any habitat to study birds. But I don't know what exactly happened that day to me. I went with uh, my two colleagues and uh, then we were doing this raptor survey and we come across something unique thing that the wind was, you know, uh, so high, even some of the plants were bending. And uh, later what happened, uh, some 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 stuff was coming from the ocean like the from the water waves and it is coming on the beaches first i was a little bit uh, not worried i i, I just uh, neglected that thing i thought maybe it's some kind of a, a rock or some wooden piece which is coming uh, and uh, getting thrown out of the ocean. But uh, later, uh, I it happened again. And I was a little bit curious to see like what exactly is coming from the from the sea. And then when we went and we saw, we find this, this creature. So it was very, very interesting to see. And not only one, we got three different individual, different, different time. And on the same day itself, and that was like uh, very interesting to see. But uh, uh, we were just only fortunate to save two of them because third, we were very late to you know go and uh, reach to that area. But uh, we were lucky enough to save two of these seahorses. You can read more about this paper in our current science publication uh, if you would like to know about this unusual behavior. Yeah, approaching any ecosystem is not uh, very easy, uh, especially in the aquatic. There are a lot of different different creatures, you know, like they, they always try to uh, aware you or say you that, uh, please keep a distance from me. So yeah, we used to be a little bit uh, careful whenever we are trying to sample or whenever we are trying to approach those areas. And uh, that time we used to come across a lot of different, different danger creature, I should say. Uh, they can't kill you. I'm not sure about because I have not yet 
luckily that come across with some such a kind of creature but yeah like these creature you can see in one uh, left hand side corner this is blue purple color uh, one jellyfish looking like a thing it's a portuguese man of war you know during a uh, previous ancient time these portuguese people they used to use in the war to paralyze the enemy so you can see how harmful or how uh, powerful this creature can be uh, so uh, we we have seen a lot of times and uh, it, it's very very danger when you are uh, approaching and when you are you know doing studies so you have to be careful even uh, when i was diving i used to come up with lot of fishes lot of some other creature uh, but uh, this is uh, one of the very like beautiful but danger creature i come across that is lion's man jellyfish it was a very huge the water was so turbid that uh, we couldn't able to like first i have saw my two other colleagues who were actually busy with uh, uh, taking some uh, photographic and evidence of uh, another area and they were doing some calculation over there and uh, i would just uh, look something like uh, turbidity like too much into the water i thought maybe somebody throw some mud or sediment in the water but uh, later on i came to know that it's something not uh, non living it's a living thing and it have a long tentacle in it so it can't kill you but it can maybe make you paralyze inside the water and it's very very danger or harmful so like that way it's very danger you know um, that you have to be little bit careful uh, whenever you are taking or doing the research and definitely uh, for doing any kind of this research you need to be uh, having a good team without good team it's very very difficult or uh, impossible to work uh, and uh, i was again um, had very nice people throughout my all journey and because of them it made possible and uh, definitely for being in research uh maintaining your this encouragement and enthusiasm in this uh, field you need some kind of inspiration or motivation these are the people in my life who were always uh pushing me to do more and more if i have some problem if i don't understand anything these people are like always be there and they used to solve my issue they used to motivate me no 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 you can do it you can do it so it's very uh, uh, i should say important to have some people uh, in your uh, research journey who will motivates you and definitely i would like to say thanks to my funding agency uh, to my previous uh, institutions and uh, oikoisans to give me opportunity to share my thoughts over here uh, it's very tough to you know discuss in detail about all these ecosystems or the systems but uh, if you guys want to know more about in detail you can definitely contact me you can email me and if you would like to know about more about one particular ecosystem or some organism also no issue you can definitely contact me uh, i will try from my side uh, to you know give you some uh, idea or whatever the knowledge i have i will try to share with you all i think yeah we have sum up our uh, today's lecture if you guys have any anything you can raise hand you can ask question uh, i will try my best to answer you all uh, passing toward uh, gauri ma'am yes amit thank you so much for this lecture it was wonderful and if i am not mistaking this is this your first webinar yeah this is my first webinar <laughs> but uh, we didn't realize this is uh, you have given it very confidently oh thank That's you so really much nice. for that <laughs> thank you so much for giving me uh, this opportunity yeah really really and uh, yeah i think we have got a uh, nice number of people to uh, if they have anything yes, to yes, ask yes. or anything to share i would like to hear from them yes they they have they have Okay. Uh, actually we were live on facebook as well so we have got some questions from there too sure 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 uh, so we will start and uh, slowly uh, i think people are also typing their questions now sure. I, i'll start asking um, how so i'll stop share right or do i need to be in you, share you can keep the last slide because it has your uh, email id okay fine so, uh, if anybody wants to 
uh, you know uh, take it down they can oh, sure, sure. find it easy yeah so the first question is uh, how does pollution affect zoo plants okay so there are should i answer is this yes, the question sir. okay yes. fine uh, there are lot of things you know uh, not only zooplankton but uh, the other uh, other creatures of aqu aquatic creature i should say uh, there is a specific pollutant affect specific kind of animals or specific kind of group of organism so if you are just talking about zooplankton actually these are drifting animals or drifting uh, kind of plankton you know they they have they can if these planktons have some problem in the ecosystem uh, and they can't tolerate that particular situation they or uh, they move from that area way immediately but the pollution level immediately is uh, coming or i should say instantly is coming uh, in a very with the force too much so you know that time you will see the mortality of this plankton okay. and uh, yeah so how exactly is affect so different kind of pollutants are there which affect these different kinds of uh, zooplankton there are some planktons they have been uh, notified by the scientist already uh, as a indicator or i should say they can tolerate the high uh, uh, amount of a particular kind of uh, pollution like they we have uh, organic and inorganic pollution also or metallic pollution also so again uh, what kind of pollution you are talking here it comes into the picture and um, yeah as i have said they have a kind of a migration movement so they can use like a fishes and they can very easily move from that area if they have a chance but if they don't have then maybe that time mortality can happen okay okay yeah uh one question uh, all all are all jellyfish dangerous or poisonous to us probably she the the person who asked the question uh, jandavi she meant us uh, like humans are they poisonous to humans all of them okay actually uh, uh, not all jellyfish actually uh, it is it depends on there are some kind of jellyfish uh, it has been even reported that you can dive with them or their stings when it come into contact with you it doesn't give you that kind of paralysis as uh, i have mentioned in with the lion's mane jellyfish you know so what happens over here uh, these some kind of jellyfish they got adapted with the uh, with the ecosystems and uh, they later on lose that kind of uh, 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 i should say um, the strongness to uh, give you that kind of uh, instinct you know to to get those kind of sensation and all so some jellyfish like you come into contact you get some tingling uh, something like they are just making you you know like feeling uh, something uh, they are there but you won't feel as such uh, harmful with them so there are some jellyfish uh, definitely uh, which are not harmful there are jellyfish which are very very harmful but uh, i will definitely say that you have to be careful with the jellyfishes because uh, it's like same as a uh, snakes because there are different kinds of snakes uh, sometimes we think it is not venomous and we uh, approach and uh, then we have right issue yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So, so we have to be a little bit careful with the, all these aquatic animals in nature there is always uh, easy to understand you know the beautiful the more colorful the more bright creature is always trying to warn you that i am danger i am uh, i can harm you so you have to be careful with that uh, signals if it is trying to give you that kind of alarming any of the signs so you have to understand that yeah maybe they have a, some kind of defense system and uh, they they can harm you when you are trying to approach them right right Amit, uh, good evening dr shivan goda Hello, hello, Dr. Shivan Gowda. How are you? Uh, I'm doing good. Us. Yeah. Right now, uh, I just can you brief me regarding the diurnal variations of zooplankton uh, and uh, classifications of zooplankton? First question. Uh, Second is uh, regarding uh, right now since a month uh, in our uh, uh, area, Gujarat coast, we have a lot of you know jellyfish bloom. so this uh, earlier it was exist around us uh, five six years back so in between that there is no bloom 
right now we have a lot of bio choking and uh, a threat regarding the uh, jellyfish bloom why it is causes so is there any uh, can you brief oh okay uh, so you have a three four question actually uh, i will try to answer from my side uh, first i would like to just ask gauri ma'am how, how much time do we have uh, we have about 10 minutes but there are uh, uh, already some questions so okay. uh, should so i what, ask them uh, yeah 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 you can ask uh, those also uh, okay. i'll just come back to you dr shivan gaurav okay yes okay yeah 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 uh, just please uh, okay there is another question uh, how is how is uh, so nation uh, different in sandy coastline from a rocky coastline zonation yes. from from sandy coastline to uh, uh, from in in sandy coastline from a rocky coast i think uh, they are asking about the zonation patterns in sandy as well as uh, rocky coastline sandy as well as rocky yeah it's very very different you know um, when it comes to uh, sandy if the total uh, sandy beach is there uh, you will find uh, um, zonation exactly means uh, can i in person ask that particular uh, person uh, exactly what they want to know in zonation means the division of the zonation uh, different in a sandy coastline from a rocky coast Line. Okay, I'll take uh, the next question. Is uh, uh, I think this question was uh, from uh, Neelam, madam. Okay. Uh, she will explain it as two more. Uh, then a uh, lot of people have thanked you. Actually, it was a very uh, informative and very nice and uh, seminar. Then, yeah. Then now you can take the question, uh, sir. Asked you. Meanwhile. Uh, we will wait for more questions okay uh, so i'll start with dr uh, shivan gaurav sir yes. so uh, he asked about diurnal migration actually you know this is little bit technical maybe some people may have not have an idea exactly what we are talking over here uh, as i was talking about you when the zooplankton uh, these have some kind of movement they never move Uh, though they are we are taking from the surface they never move uh, horizontally they always move vertically so this diurnal variation means what so what they do with the tidal movement with the time they have a different kind of composition different kind of uh, what we call the abundance like numbers also so when we have the highest high tide when we have the low tide and in between also there is a time period like after each even half an hour or one hour when you do the sampling in the same particular spot of the area you will see the composition like if there is a 15 different individuals are there in that zooplankton maybe after one hour when you will try to find you won't be able to see you will see only 10 or maybe sometimes even two also so but the abundance means the number of those particular two different types of individual may be in high quantity so this down vertical migration is very interesting and very you uh, very uh, uh, helpful for scientist uh, or researcher like us when they are studying these ecosystems especially the pelagic uh, uh, food chain because this can help us to understand at what time uh, uh, how, what time how many types of individuals are present in that particular uh, zooplankton communities and uh, this can even tell you the total number of present uh, individuals in that particular time so when uh, you it can give you a representation of that particular system that how exactly rich that area is and how how the this tide or the time is different differently uh, uh changing their composition and uh, making uh, that area available to this zooplankton when we are talking about um, uh, what we called uh, this jellyfish bloom he was telling actually uh, there are lot of time we have seen uh, this jellyfish bloom means not only one or two you see in a lot actually and uh, 
when I was in Gujarat, I also came across uh, with this kind of bloom. And uh, it was very uh, interesting to see. You won't see uh, to, throughout the whole day. It is like a particular time. And I think it is happening because of this, uh, uh, what we call the tidal action and the time. You will not be able to see in uh, them uh, any time on a, 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 any season. It's like a, you, they have a specific time and the season. Uh, I have not studied them in detail, but maybe uh, my assumption is that maybe they have a particular kind of a food uh, for that uh, they comes. There is a temperature also which is affecting that time. There are some kind of nutrients which are uh, uh, helping them, or I should say, uh, diverting their uh, movement from that place to another place. And uh, as uh, you know, these jellyfishes, they don't have mouth parts like us and all. So first of all, they try to feed on the uh, small uh, animals such as these planktons and all. Then later on, what they do with the help of their tentacles and all, they try to you know uh, catch this big fish or some other another big uh, crustaceans or the creatures. And slowly, slowly, uh, it start disintegrating. And uh, after that, whatever the things uh, uh, they they will release uh, with the help of that, they will uh, try to absorb. Okay, okay. Yeah, that was a really nice explanation. Well, uh, about about this donation, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would like to uh, tell you that uh, if they want to know exactly the division in that, uh, uh, too technically, maybe they can contact me. Uh, I will be definitely, uh, you know, uh, very happy to explain them in detail. But uh, it will be too technical to, you know, uh, give them an idea like exactly how it is dividing from the uh, land when it is, you know, uh, started uh, until the uh, till the water water level when it is it touches to the water level. Either it is a co yeah. uh, what we call rocky area or a sandy beach area. Okay, okay. Nigandha uh, must try to explain zonation means distribution of flora and fauna along the gradient, right? So okay. I think uh, yeah, so. yeah. So I think that is very interesting again because uh, it's very easy. I will just uh, very simply I will explain in that way. Uh, the drier you will find a different kind of creature, and I will not exactly here talk about only uh, what we call sandy or rocky. It's uh, like how you know uh, there are some creature who can afford uh, what we called a little bit if they they are not wet they don't have uh, water means moisture content they can afford uh, like uh, to go away from that water area uh, and a little bit away from that area and they can you know search the food and these kind of animals are different for example you will see in that uh, area you will see lot of crabs you will see lot of uh, you know some animals uh, something like uh, which can walk on that area which can crawl on that area but as you come near to the uh, water 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 level uh, though there will be a rock though there will be a sand you will find uh, those they can't that much afford uh, the desiccation but again there is a inter between very active zone we called as an intertidal zone where the water is always coming and gushing and gushing so those animals are different kind of animal because they have selected that patch specifically for feeding purpose they can't stay over there because that area is always disturbed so they can't stay over there but they come over there to feed on different kind of organism so you won't be able to see the organism which you have seen in the uh, upper level of that particular zone uh, maybe sometimes you will find but not in that much number and as you will go a little bit down uh, there are different kind of animals such as uh, you will find mostly uh, some bivalves some worms okay okay um, now I think yeah there are no more questions but I have one Okay, uh, sure, sure. Yeah, see, um, now even we uh, we organize nature camps, so it's a kind of a tourism. Okay. Yeah. Uh, although we take a lot of care, but uh, I see a lot of tourism happening along the sea coast. Okay. Uh, or sometimes even if we have a big river, it's so along, along the riverside as well. Sure. So are these activities uh, affecting uh, the the flora or fauna over there? 
definitely yeah. how uh, definitely yeah. it's like uh, mm, they are now right now if you are not going to the if you have for example you have a, a one small sandy beach area okay mm. and uh, th- there is every time uh, as dr shivan gowda also mentioned about one zooplankton diurnal migration or uh, mm. movement so yeah. like that we you know these animals are always they never take rest they are always there at 24 by 7 hours working in that particular system right. only the the composition or the change of number of the animals you know like shifting there is a shifting of animals according to the movement of the water according to the you know change in the temperature so change in the substratum so like that way they, they but you will find always there are some kind of animals it's like they have a particular role in that particular time to perform in that particular system so it's very interesting uh but uh, when we always uh, you know want to enjoy we come there so what we do we are actually become harder for them it's like uh, maybe there are lot of crabs in a gregarious like in a flock or oh, i should i should use in a group they are coming to feed in sand you know sand also have some kind of a plankton which you can't see and have you seen any time some crabs are you know taking sand into their body and then they are making some balls out of it and they are releasing on the uh, on the sandy beaches have you seen any time yes so so uh, what they are doing actually over there they are actually taking that sand and in that they have a lot of minerals nutrients and even some uh, 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 plankton in it so they are not just only uh, eating that uh, like uh, making that fancy design on the beach but they are actually feeding uh, simultaneously uh, uh, and they are taking nutrition from that so uh, they are that time active so i want to just go into the water so what i will do i will just smash whatever the activity is happening over there i'll just run throughout that beach and i'll disturb them as right. you will you are a biggest uh, creature on the earth as such now or uh, means uh, uh, intelligent creature i should say so when you are uh, going uh, you are you just want to enjoy on that habitat so you you are going and you are disturbing that thing and what it is happening he is getting scared that particular animal and he is uh, going away from that area so he can't able to perform the duty what he has assigned at that time so it's like i just give a very small example of one particular small animal crab but there are lot of animals they are doing at that time this different different activity and just because of our movement our presence uh, it's very tough or difficult to them to do this uh, all the processes and uh, not only that right now we have a we have a big issue with the plastic and uh, plastic related materials so what it is happening it's like now giving lot of problem with all this aquatic ecosystem because it's everywhere and it is making tough in a way that for them it's impossible sometimes or difficult to access their home their area sometimes for roosting for some for resting sometimes for feeding so it's very very tough you know in that way uh, that we are directly actually affecting them and uh, that can cause a problem but if it is happening one person or two person is different but when it is happening in a uh, in a amount uh, it's like a big impact on them right so basically uh, whatever uh, you are doing you have to be really careful it's something called as responsible tourism that uh, every yeah we have to we have to true 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 right, right. so on uh, this note uh, i think uh, yeah we have come to the end of our session because i don't see any uh, questions uh, there so thank you so much amit once again for uh, carefully answering all the questions and so patiently yeah. that's really nice i i'm not sure about uh, whether i have you know given them satisfactory answer or not but definitely if they uh, want to know more and uh, if uh, i i have uh, misspoken something they can definitely contact me they can tell me uh, and uh, i'll try to improve that next time yes uh, yeah i would like to say one thing the the white bellied sea eagle that uh, the photograph that you showed and it was sitting on the tree Mm-hmm. yeah that was the angiosperm uh, 
and that is Kaijurina equisitifolia, commonly called locally called as suru. Okay, yeah. suru. Okay. Yeah, 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 yes. yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's now, a conifer plant, basically, right? No, uh, that's no. angiosperm. Oh, angiosperms are not conifer. Oh, uh, thank you for correcting that, me. Actually, okay, so. uh, the, the, these are the things, you know, like uh, we biologists or ecologists, especially who That's are okay. dealing with Perfect animals. You. Yeah, it have a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we are all are here to gather the knowledge. So that's perfectly okay. I didn't know yeah, even the 1% you, of you. all what you said. So that was fantastic. And I would like to also thank all the listeners. Uh, you all have been wonderful throughout the series. As I keep on saying at the end of the every series and every time we get good listeners and very good questions come up uh, from all of them. Thank you so much for this. Uh, your support uh, uh, means a lot uh, to us. So thank you so much, everyone. Yeah, thank you, Amir. Yeah, once thank again. you, thank you, and, thank uh, you. All. We will end the session. Thank you.